ancient town of Aleppo in northern Syria. There occurred at the end of the First World War a tremendous awakening among the few thousand Armenians who had survived the horrors of the genocide in Turkey. Because of Aleppo's commercial importance, Armenians had settled and prospered there as early as the 13th century. During periods of Ottoman oppression, many of these early Armenians of Aleppo lived in underground caverns beneath their churches. Under the church of Karasun Mandats, known as the Church of Thirty Children, there were huge secret chambers. The miracle of Armenian rebirth in Aleppo in the early part of the 20th century has its roots in the destruction of the last kingdom of Greater Armenia. In the 11th century, Seljuk Turks from Central Asia overran the Armenian plateau. Armenian princes and barons, together with their armies and vast populations, migrated southward to Balikia, to the shores of the Mediterranean. Under Prince Robin, they established a principality in 1080, which a century later became a kingdom. This was a region of enormous strategic and commercial importance. For 300 years, Balikia and Armenia was a place of prospering trade in thriving cities, a place of genuine civilization. Beset by hostile forces from the east and from the west, it was a constant struggle to maintain the Christian faith. The 12th and 13th centuries were periods of creativity and progress, known as the Silver Age of Armenian culture. era, the religious poetry of Catologos Nersis Shemarevi the Galatius and the manuscript illustrations of Taurus Roslin attained great heights. Learning, culture and art flourished. The Kingdom of Galicia had come into being during a stormy period of European history. The First Crusade arrived in Galicia in 1096, a scant generation after the establishment of the First Armenian Principality. The Crusader Knights were welcomed by the Armenians, who provided provisions and military equipment. With their fortifications and castles, the Armenians guarded the rear flank of the Crusaders. solidarity between the two groups remained for a full 200 years. Finally, in 1375, the Mamluk forces of Egypt subdued the Armenian kingdom of Galicia. The period of Ottoman Turkish rule that was to follow submerged the Armenian population into a long night that was to last some 600 years. Prior to the First World War, several hundred thousand Armenians lived in Galicia. Here was a land facing the open seas to the west, a place of gardens and gentle hills. The Armenians shared with the Turks the towns of the area. Marash, Adama, Sis, Antad. The rugged landscape was similar to Bulgaria, Armenia, where their forefathers had lived. Most Armenians were engaged in agriculture and lived in mountain villages. As a rule, the Armenians were successful in the commercial life of the towns. They were the scribes, the carpenters, the shopkeepers, 
believers. Many Armenians were in the professions, principally in medicine, nursing, teaching, and the ministry. In many ways, the Armenian intellectual class was oriented to the West. In Antab, the American missionaries had established the Central Turkey College. Almost all its faculty and students were Armenian. Christianity was the central force in the life of the Armenian community. The Armenian Catholic Church of Aintab, for example, was one of the most imposing sanctuaries in the region. Protestantism was particularly strong in Galicia. The Apostolic, or National Church, retained its traditional dominant role in the religious and cultural life of the Armenians. This church was governed by a Catologos who had his seat in the Galician capital at Sis. Prior to the First World War, the Armenian Apostolic Church supported hundreds of churches and schools in Galicia. During centuries of harsh Ottoman rule, dominant Turkish ways and customs had made changes in Armenian life. For example, the Turkish fez had been accepted as a headgear by the Garibald Amusia Akbabian family, as by most other Armenians of the area. Armenians had been forced to use the Turkish language until they were no longer able to speak their native tongue. But their faith remained Christian, and their outlook was Western. They were a proud people. years of the 20th century arrived, the Armenian leaders were not aware of impending doom. They were soon to be destroyed. Ministers, artists, scientists, doctors, professors, lawyers, and craftsmen were to be massacred. The genocide of 1915 to an end the centuries-old, uneasy, Armenian and Turkish coexistence. After the defeat of Turkey in the First World War, the French occupied Galicia for a brief period. With the sudden departure of the French in January 1922, a second genocide was in the making. A good portion of the Armenian population of Galicia was saved, however, due in large part to the Armenian defenders of Ein Tab, led by Adil Livonian and other volunteers. Men and women joined together to dig trenches. There were men no lights and grenades. The defense of Aintab prevented a new massacre at the hands of the Turks. But were they alone? 